Good evening everybody and once again welcome to the video. Now these are some of the advanced concept um, and um, you know tips, tricks, hands-on session on uh, Delta Lakes. The first part basically we ta talked about what is Delta Lakes right but then we did a hello world. Uh, we essentially inserted into a Delta Lake. We essentially read from a Delta Lake using AWS glue connector. Then the third video was essentially insert, update, read and write a complete CRUD operation on a, a Delta Lake using PySpark. We used uh, a custom jar files. Now the fourth video after that we essentially did um, uh, how to essentially uh, you know if you on the Delta Lake if you have a lot of parquet files how can we essentially uh, convert those into a bigger parquet file and then essentially prune the older version. Now this video I'm gonna be showing you everything that is find one and update that means whenever you're trying to insert into Delta Lake how do I avoid duplicates right and then essentially we're gonna uh, once a job is done right it's gonna create the new parquet files so we're gonna again run the vacuum command and again essentially delete the older files and then uh, convert the new files into a bigger parquet files so let's get started straight into action <laughs> all right I'll, uh, there was a lot of talking but uh, hopefully um, that makes sense so what I have done is, you know, I made my own classes about 100 lines. Uh, it's called Delta Lake Helper. And this essentially has all the methods, um, you know, that, that I want to do. For example, this, this takes care of everything, right? So for example, inserting uh, records into Delta Lake, appending records into Delta Lake, updating records from the Delta Lake, um, deleting records from the Delta Lake, read from a Delta Lake, absurd, that is essentially find one and delete. Uh, I made something called compact tables. Uh, this essentially, uh, you know, converts the parquet files uh, on the Delta Lake into the number of files that you want. Uh, then I also made a method for generate manifest. So basically these are all the helper methods that I can use. So what I wanna show you here in this video is again, uh, I'll explain you in the paint and then I'll, expl uh, then I'll show you. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is I have a Delta Lake. Again, I do have a Delta Lake about nine files, okay? So I have one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 10, okay? So these are all the employee IDs I have in my Delta Lake right now, okay? Now, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna update a record. So I'm gonna update number three. I'm gonna do an update on a Delta Lake, right? Uh, then I'm gonna delete this one, okay? And then I will be inserting two, two new records that is basically record number 11 and record number three. Now again, uh, record number 11 is not there in the Delta Lake, right? So essentially it should be inserted, right? And record number three is there. So hence it has to be updated, right? So I'll be simulating that. And at the end, once, as you guys know, when, when you perform your CRUD operation, Delta Lake creates a new version or a new, new data files. Now what we want to do is basically we want to prune the older version and this is basically my new files. So what I'm trying to say is say you, so for example, uh, I have nine files right now, right? After I perform my CRUD operation, there might be one or two more files I may be added, right? So these are my nine older files and now again, I'll be, I'm just taking a number, okay? Let's say two more files have been added, right? So now what I'll do is essentially, I want to convert my, uh, you know, let's say, um, and this parquet file into one parquet file. Um, you know, I don't want to have too many small parquet, right? So I essentially want to convert into a larger parquet. Once I'm done with that, I want to prune the older version, right? So I'll prune this version. That's basically what I want to do, right? So hopefully that made sense, right? So let's, let me show you uh, things in action. So again, I have some snippets here for creating, for reading, for update, for delete, all of that is there. You can uncomment and try that out, okay? So specifically, I wanna show you this one, right? Again, uh, record number three. Again, before that, I have inserted some data into the Delta Lake and essentially, uh, record number three is already there in the Delta Lake. So for example, if you see, when I was generating data over here, I'm generating 10 records, right? So record number three already exists. So what I'm doing is, I'm providing one duplicate. Uh, again, this is the employee ID, right? And this is some updated information, right? Which is currently there in the Delta Lake. So this one, it should be an update. Record number 11 is not there in the Delta Lake, so it has to be an insert, okay? So this will be an update and this will be an insert. How do we do that? 
So the first thing that we do is we make a Spark data frame on line 207, as you can see. And then essentially I made a class and there's a method called absurd record into Delta Lakes. Uh, this will take uh, three uh, items, that is the old key, employee ID, new key, employee ID, and the data frame, right? That is the new data frame object. So over here, again, it's very easy. What I did is essentially, I took the old uh, Delta Lake, I'm reading the old Delta Lake and I'm saying old data. I'm performing a merge operation here. Um, uh, again, this is the new Spark data frame, right? I'm giving it an alias called new data. And then if you observe, I'm, here is my join condition or my match condition here. I'm saying in my old data frame, match where the employee ID is equal to uh, whatever the employee ID is in the new data frame. If the condition matches, which means if uh, over here, observe, I have two items, right? That is three and number 11, employee number three and employee number 11. Employee three already exists, which means it has to be updated in the uh, uh, Delta like, right? Employee 11, uh, the condition won't match because that ID is a new record. So hence, that is an insert, right? So again, this will, again, if you observe here carefully, when match, update all, when not match, insert all, right? And then I'm using the execute method over here, right? So that's gonna do the job for me. And after that, what I'm gonna do, again, if you observe, I explain you the concept, right? What happens, right? So whenever, let's say you had nine files before and you perform your insert update deletes so delta lake will essentially make a new data files right so now all these are let's say assume hypothetically five files are added right so these are your old files these are your new files now of course it's going to merge everything and you know and uh, now what i want to do is i don't want to have these too many small parquet files i want to convert everything into let's say two files at the end right so that's that's the end goal right so what i'll do here Again, I made it simple. I wrote all these classes for you. You can reuse. So I, I, I'm gonna run a method called compact table uh, and I'm providing the number of files here as two, which means I'm saying at the end, I just want two file, two parquet files. I don't want too many files. And then here, if you observe, I'm doing a vacuum, which means I'm, I'm providing zero, which means I'm gonna delete all the older version. Again, if you want to delete the older version, you can. If it doesn't harm, you can keep it. Ideally, why would you do that is basically to save money on the storage. It's okay, you can put this uh, older version, but as you're performing, you know, updates, uh, uh, deletes, uh, insert, there will be new data files created, new versions, right? So that essentially will constitute more space on your uh, S3 and which will cost you a little money. Again, uh, the money will be in peanuts because again, S3 is pretty cheap. But as I said, right, if you wanna save on cost, I, I recommend, you know, deleting the older version. But important thing, when you do a vacuum on Delta Lake, make sure you're not inserting, updating anything on the Delta Lake at that particular time. That's important, okay? So yeah, I have a method called delete all file. And then at the end, what I'm doing is, uh, I'm generating the manifest file so that I can query the data on the Athena, right? So again, all these classes, I have written, right? So I'm gonna copy this code and I will be trying this out. Uh, let me make sure. Uh, yeah, so basically, um, again, as I said, right? This is an update, this is this should be an insert, right? And what I wanna do is, yeah, that looks good. I'll try this out. I'll come here, I'll come to the glue. Yeah, I'm gonna come to script tag, uh, paste my code here. Again, I wrote all these classes. Again, it makes my life so easy, right? I can do all the CRUD operation. I can, you know, remove all the versions. I can do everything with the classes that I wrote. By the way, I'm actually thinking I'm gonna publish this class as an open source on PyPyPy so people can download using a pip install uh, on the glue, right? I'll write all the documentation, I'll do everything. So just give me some time, about a week or two, I'll publish this as an open source package. Okay, um, so now what I'll do is um, I, I'll run the job. Uh, I have started the job. And here you can see the job is running. Now again, uh, just going to the notepad to make sure you know what we are doing, right? So uh, let me actually, because the job is running. So again, we have these uh, nine files before or 10 records uh, you wanna say, right? Total nine parquet files or whatever you wanna call. Uh, actually, let me just show, show, show like this one, two, up to 10, right? We have 10 employees, right? Now what I'm doing is uh, I'm providing three and four. So basically employee three will be an update. Employee four will be, uh, and let's say employee 11, right? Employee 11 is not there. So that's an insert. This is an update. Uh, whenever, you know, 
uh, insert update happens, uh, you know, uh, Delta Lake will make those new Parquet files. Now, assume they made like four Parquet files, right? What I want to do is at the end, I want to have only two Parquet files because if you have studied properly, you know, in Athena, uh, more number of files cause performance degradation. Larger files help you to have a better read and save cost. Again, that's, uh, you know, you can read uh, more, right? So again, this job is running here. I'll refresh and see if it's complete. It's still running. Since it's running, I will. I would love to show you the article that we posted on how we optimize and got 50% faster. Um, you know, uh, faster speed on Athena queries. Uh, again, an entire article written here. Observe this one carefully. 5,000 file took 8.4 seconds. You know, these are single files, and then one single file it took 2.3. So 72 times faster. This was the article on top 10 performance tuning tips on Amazon Athena. Again, so I am saying all these from my past experience. I, I manage data like in my company, right? We have nearly three to four terabyte worth of data and these all are coming from my experience. Okay, it's still running at this point. I'm gonna run this, uh, it's still running. So we'll wait for the job to complete. Uh, this might take again a second or two, as I said. So refreshing. At the end, again, as I explained you, right, in the code, I'm expecting two files. So all the older version, it's gonna prune that. And this one right here, it's gonna, again, uh, do an upsert, which means any record it finds, it's gonna update. Uh, if it doesn't find a record, it's gonna insert, right, based on the condition. And the condition was based on the employee ID, right? So basically that. So again, uh, Delta Lake is super popular, you know, as I said, succeeded. Now we go to Athena and I query my uh, data, my query my data lake. Observe here carefully. So let me collapse this. Observe this. 11, right? This is an append. You can see this should be an append. And um, record number three, this is an update on the delta lake, right? Absolutely flawless, right? That PySpark class that I told, I'll essentially publish as an open source Python library, right? So people can use it. Because I know it's hard to, you know, go over the documentation, read stuff. Uh, it would be nice if there's a directly a class and you can just use the methods that uh, are written for you, right? That way you don't have to scan over all the documentation, right? So that's it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, I'll leave all the resources into the description. As, as I said, uh, feel free to go over that and try these labs out personally. Thank you so much. Keep smiling, keep programming, and we'll keep learning all, all this new amazing technology. And with that being said, if you have questions, you may post your question in the comments. And I'll see you in the upcoming next video. Thank you.